We are working on our actual complex numbers this time. So far what we've done is we've figured out what our imaginaries are, we know what our real numbers are, so now we're putting it all together. A complex number is a number that is written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are both real numbers. So remember your real numbers are your whole numbers, your integers, your uh, decimals, fractions, radicals, rationals, irrationals, and i is the square root of negative one. And then another thing we're going to be needing is conjugates. a plus bi and a minus bi are both conjugates of each other. Remember, you just simply change that sign in the middle. So the set of real numbers is a subset of the set of complex numbers, meaning real numbers are really complex numbers, but your b value is simply a zero. So for example, let's say we have four plus zero i. Well, this means we really don't have any i, so that would just be gone, and you would just have the number four. So number four is a real number. Imaginary numbers, again, is really a complex number, but your a value is a zero, and your b value is not a zero. For example, zero plus six i. This is just purely imaginary because this real number here, that doesn't really exist. That's zero. It's not there. So really all we have is the imaginary number six i. So real numbers, imaginaries are all a subset of the complex. And here's our little graphic organization tool to show you what we mean. So when we are dealing with our complex numbers, we always need to write them in the form of a plus bi. So your i term always needs to come second. Everything else needs to come in front of it. So if we look at example number one, first thing I need to do is I need to clean up radical 24 so that it's not a negative number under the radical, but instead we have the i with it. So the square root of four gives me two, then I get an i, and my radical six is still there. Bring down my seven, and then that's a plus bi form. Seven is your a, all of this is your bi term. So there's your a plus bi. In just this case, your b is a negative, so that's why it's subtraction instead of a positive. Over here to number two, Again, first thing I'm going to take care of is this, the square root of negative 4. Remember, we take out that negative 1. 4 is a perfect square, so I don't need to break it down any further. So that becomes 2i, but it's times the 2 that was already here in front, so this becomes 4i. And then I just bring everything else back down because it's still there. I just was manipulating that one term in the middle. So 3 minus 5 gives us negative 2 plus 4i. And again, i has to go last because of our correct complex number form of a plus bi. For number 3, anytime you have an i where the exponent is greater than 1, we have to clean that up. So we have to clean up our i squared here. i squared is negative 1, so that turns into a negative 6. And again, I just bring down my 4i, but this is not in the correct order. I've got to switch the orders here. We get negative 6 plus 4i. That negative sign stays with your 6. So then here, solve for x for this one. Remember, it starts with a. Our complex numbers are a plus bi. So here, my a terms are both 3s, so my a's match. It's my b's that I'm trying to figure out. Here my b is in negative, or an x minus 2. Over there, my b is a 7. So what we can do is since these are equal, that means my b terms have to be equal. So x minus 2 equals 7. Add 2. So x equals a 9. When x is a 9, then those two complex numbers are equal to each other. Same thing over here for the next one. So I've got to get my a's equal. So 3x equals 6. Divide by 3, and we get x equals 2. First part's done. 
So now we have to figure out our B. And B is everything around your I. So negative 5 and then negative 10Y. So I set those equal. Divide by negative 10. And I get 0.5 equals Y. And that's our final answer for that one. So your A's are equal to your A's. B's are equal to B's. You use those to help you solve for the variables. So let's try a few on the back. We are finding the sum or the difference. So that means we're just adding them. There's a little plus sign right here in the middle. So we've got to do our like term. So 2 plus a negative 5 would give me a negative 3. 4i plus a negative 6i would give us negative 2i. So all you're doing is adding or subtracting your like terms. Over here for number 7, because you've got this negative sign right here, you want to distribute that through the second set of parentheses here. So that makes that a plus 2, and that makes this a minus 4i. So now that I've taken care of that, I can combine my like terms. Negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1. Negative 8 minus 4 gives me negative 12i. And that's my final answer. Again, it's in complex form because your real numbers are first, and then you got your imaginary second. For 8, I'm going to distribute this negative 5. So I get a negative 20 plus 5i. And I'm going to bring down my first parentheses. There's nothing in front of it, so those ones aren't going to change. So I'm going to combine my like terms, so I'm going to subtract those. I get negative 12. Subtract those ones, we get a positive 1i. Which, remember, we don't have to write that 1. We can leave it as just i. 9, we have to get those negatives out from underneath the radicals first. So the square root of negative 9 becomes 3i. The square root of negative 144 becomes negative 12i. So now subtracting my i's, I get 4 minus 9i. And that's your final answer. So these rules are very similar to just any other variables that you're manipulating, whether it's just x's or if you're using theta. It's the same rules. You can combine like terms. The ones that aren't like, you cannot combine. So for 10, first we've got to simplify that radical 12. So first we take out the negative, and then it's 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So that gives me 4i radical 3. The 2 times the 2 gives me the 4. And then this turns into your i, and then radical 3. Over here, the 27 would be 9 and 3. Remember, the square root of 9 is 3, so we get plus 4 plus 3i radical 3. So now we can actually combine our like terms. 5 plus 4 is 9. Negative 4i radical 3 plus 3i radical 3 gives us negative i radical 3. Over here for 11, first thing I'm going to do is clean up my radical 8. So for this parenthesis, it turns into 2 minus 2i radical 2. So then for my next one, same thing with my 32. I'm going to clean that up. 16 and 2. 16 comes out as a 4. <coughs> but the other thing I forgot to do first was distribute my negative. So this 6 is now positive. This 3 is now positive also. So I get plus 12i radical 2. So then last step, combine my like terms. 2 plus 6 is 8. Negative 2i plus 12i is a positive 10i, radical 2. And then our last one here, 7 minus i and its conjugate. We're adding them. Sum means to add. So there's your 7 minus i plus its conjugate. Remember, you just simply change those signs in the middle. So its conjugate is 7 plus i. So then 7 plus 7 is 14. Negative i plus i cancels each other out. So we're left simply with 14. 